coach Dubuque is it human enough here in, uh, in, oh, yeah. in Georgia for you? Love it. Nice and warm. I don't even have to warm up. I'm That's sweating true. already. You like, literally don't have to. That's right. All right, coming here, uh, looking at the combine here at C3. You're number two. Were you here last year? I wasn't. Uh, coach Ayers was here um, representing Princeton, so I figured I'd give him a rest and come out here and check out some smart kids and, you know, do some technique and things like that. So, when I, you know, I ask you the question, you know, not every kid can go to Princeton. Yeah. It's not like they're going to state schools in the yep. Pennsylvania system, the Ohio system, where they, the academic standards just, you're in the Ivy League. Yeah. Looking at getting some smart kids. Absolutely. How hard is it to get a smart kid who's regimented, can wrestle, and is tougher than nails? Well, I think, uh, I think the climate is changing. Uh, I think kids uh, who are not, are, who are putting more, uh, as much emphasis on their academics as they are the wrestling. So uh, we're getting a great combination. Um, and even the guys are, you know, that are really smart and that they're, you know, stud wrestlers. Maybe 15 years ago, they weren't, they weren't really looking at Ivy League schools. They were still looking to maybe go to those Big Ten, Big Twelve schools uh, because, you know, the wrestling was top notch there. Now the Ivy League is proving that you can go to an Ivy League school, especially Princeton. You can get uh, the best education and become an All American and contend for a national championship. So I think guys who are, you know, who have those standards, those academic standards who are, you know, kicking butt in wrestling are really focusing on, on Princeton and the other Ivy League institutions as a, as a really good option. Looking at you guys finally breaking through with an All-American at 197 this year, obviously that's going to be a huge weight off your shoulders because everything's so March-centered in the sport that, you know, we're in. Uh, looking at that, I think the flood, it feels to me like the floodgates are about to open for you. you got a guy coming off gray shirt who I think is one of the best guys could have won 141 this year. Looking at guys like that, looking at your 197, I think it's right there for the floodgates to open. Are the floodgates going to open for Princeton this year? And we're going to see a bunch of guys on the podium. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, in years past, I mean, you know, we're, we're, you know, not selling kids on a vision, but that's what we were talking about. You know, we're talking, we were talking about that day three years ago. You know, we're talking about Brett Horner being an All-American, but we didn't just, we didn't have it yet. Now we have it. And going back to how I just talked, uh, or just what I said before, it's, you know, we're the number one school in the country. You, if you have an opportunity to go there, you can get the best education, you know, and compete to be an All-American. And now we're starting to prove it, and we're starting to show uh, that our system works, uh, and that you can come to Princeton, and you can accomplish your goals academically and wrestling-wise. Um, and I think they are, because that's what really held kids up. You know, it's because we didn't have that All-American to point to, or we didn't have that national champion or, or anything like that. So, you know, now we have somebody who's come up through our system, who's been there, who's done it, uh, and now people are, people are not going to be like, well, you know, you haven't really proved it wrestling-wise. Now we're starting to prove it. You know, Ben Askren was a program changer for Mizzou. Could Kolodzik be a program changer for Princeton? Is that something that, do you feel comfortable even talking about that? Can this guy be the guy who changes Abs the culture? Absolutely, and and here's the thing: like our program has taken jumps, uh, you know, just in the last uh, ten years that Coach Ayers has been there. You know, it's 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 jumps on on you know and accomplishing different things and breaking through different barriers. You know, uh, we feel like this senior class that's going to be seniors was really a program changer. You know, Brett Harner, him, you know, committing to Princeton and saying I'm going to go there. You know really on a vision and on what we were telling him was going to be, uh, that it, in itself was a program changer. Now, you know, yeah, we broke into the top 30, we got an All-American, now we feel like, yeah, Kolodzik can definitely, Kolodzik and this freshman class can easily take us to that next level of where we want to be, you know, in the top 10 and, and consistently producing multiple All-Americans, having guys contend for national championships. So absolutely, I think Matthew Kolodzik and the rest of the, the younger group of guys uh, can take this program to where we really need it to be. RTC, you guys started an RTC. If you look at the RTC and get the infrastructure for post-grad athletes, bringing in post-grad athletes to train freestyle we're, and have a little bit of that rub off on your team, how important is that infrastructure and adding that? I think it's really important. You know, I mean, like everybody has different things that they want to add, you know, that they feel can add um, a perk to their program. Some guys do a, a complex, uh, you know, we're really looking at that regional training center. We feel like that can be something that can, 
you know, be a viable option for guys post grads to really train and try to accomplish their goals of being, you know, world team members, world champions, Olympic champions, uh, which then do, does trickle down, you know, to the to the Princeton University team. Uh, so that's something that we're really looking at. I feel like we have a great location to do it. Um, you know, one of our uh, one of our biggest uh, you know alumni is Michael Novogratz. He's you know he's Mr. USA Wrestling. He's beat the streets. Uh, so I think that we can really blow this thing up uh, and, and and really be one of the best regional train Olympic regional training centers in the country. Uh, you know, Coach Ayers is in his 30s. I believe you're in your 30s now. I, I, I have to say, uh, Coach Ayers is in his 40s, but, you know. Really? <laughs> is he? he doesn't look that, does he? He looks good. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, how are you guys, as far as, do you get out and train with the guys much anymore, or has it become more watching, observing, here's what you need to fix? Has your coaching style changed? Has his coaching style changed? Uh, no, honestly, like, I think what's really unique about our coaching staff is that uh, we all have a lot of coaching experience. I mean, I have 10 years of D1 coaching experience under my belt. Uh, Coach Gray, I think, has the same thing, either 10 or 11 years of coaching experience. Uh, Coach Ayers has 10 years of head coaching experience. So, and we all get on the mat and wrestle. Uh, I, I think that's really kind of what separates us from a lot of programs um, where, you know, if you see, a, you know, if you see, if you go to programs, it's usually the, you know, you have an older head coach who's got a ton of experience. Administrative guy. He's really guy. an administrative guy. He kind of plans out practices. Uh, then you have a guy who's, you know, who also has some, you know, coaching experience, but he still gets on the mat and he helps out administratively. Uh, and then, you, you know, your, your second assistant is really like that young guy straight out of college, really like a, you know, a workout partner partner, grinder, things like that. Uh, so I think that's kind of, you know, unique about our coaching staff is that we get in there and grind. You know, I'm in there uh, working with the RTC guys. I'm also working out with our guys from 25 to 49. So, I mean, you know, I love wrestling. I mean, it's it's just, it's in my blood. Uh, you know, will I say, will I say I feel like I'm 21 again? No. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you got to make some adjustments to your wrestling and and you know how much you do get on the mat, but I get on the mat, and I spe especially I got this really, uh, really good kid who always pulls on me and tries to get me to wrestle. You know, he'll be he'll be in Princeton next year. <laughs> so, uh, uh, do you think that uh, you know, looking at the degrees that kids get, I mean, these guys are going to Wall Street. I think Daniel Kladzik actually is on Wall Street, yep. maybe. Yep. You know, I mean, that's just like that's one example. Everybody moves on to like almost it feels like bigger, better things than wrestling. Do you think Princeton guys, you know, when they get the degree, it's time for them to go out into the world? Is it hard to sell on them? Hey, come train, go through a quad cycle, and, and see if you can get on the Olympic team. Is that something hard for you guys to do? Is that something you're trying to work towards a little bit more as a staff? Yeah. Is that something? I mean, you, they got an Ivy League degree. Yeah, yeah. And uh, honestly, I think it. I think it. It really. Um, it comes from the the guys that we're bringing in. So the guys that we're bringing in now, I'm not saying that, that, that these guys before who have graduated didn't have these goals, but you know, the guys that we, we have coming in have, I think they have these postgraduate goals of, of making a world team and, and making an Olympic team. And it, it's easy to sell those guys. And honestly, upon graduation, that Princeton degree is always gonna be there. So it's not like you you're, you have this rush, you know, to, to jump on, you know, strike while the iron's hot because you're just graduating and you gotta use this degree. You know, that Princeton degree is always gonna be there. And honestly, like our network is unbelievable with our alumni, um, you know, always wanting to hire within and, and wanting to hire their own. So uh, I think it's actually gonna be easier moving forward uh, because these young guys have those goals of, of staying and training for four years, and, and that's what we want. You know, that, that's how the best programs do it. Ohio State did it, Nebraska does it. You know, they're keeping their best guys, you know, in-house, you know, in their regional training center. They're keeping them training for one, two cycles, and, and that's where, you know, we'll, and where we, when we get to where we want to be as a program, uh, when we're, we're when we're producing those multiple All-Americans a year, and we're constantly in the top ten as a team, we're going to have those guys sticking around, and, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to make it's going to make the whole program better. Got some live wrestling coming up here. I want to watch some of that. Do you have anything else for me? Yeah. So one more thing, and uh, we've been pushing this all spring. Uh, is battle at the birthplace, you know, with us and Rutgers. Um, November 19th, 
We're going to be wrestling uh, Rutgers University. Uh, it's called Battle at the Birthplace in their football stadium at 11 a.m. right before Rutgers plays Penn State in football. We're trying to get you know the most fans to a, a college dual meet in history. Uh, I think Iowa and Oklahoma State did 42,000. We want to do 45,000. I think we can absolutely do it um, in New Jersey, uh, especially with the surrounding states, PA, uh, New York, you know, Maryland. I think if we all come together and we, we you know, if these people, if these coaches and these kids say that they want to be a part, a part of history and they want to see something that never, you know, well, it's only been done once, but I mean, that's that's the thing. And honestly, we're going to have a great team. Rutgers is going to have a great team. It's going to be a fantastic event. I'm super excited about it, and I can't wait. I want to get 45,000 people to that match. Well, I'm trying to be there, so. We watch you. All right, man. Thanks for the Thank time. You. Safe travels. Appreciate it.